Hey everybody, thanks for watching. Today I'm gonna to be doing a review of the hack motion. You've seen this on the channel a lot, but somebody just texted me and said, hey, can you forward me your hack motion review? And I was looking around and I was like, you know what? I've had the hack motion on the channel a lot, but I've never done actually just a regular review. So um, that's what this is gonna be. All right, first of all, what is the hack motion? So you see my wrist going this way and this way. I have it set to be able to see the flexion. This measures, the hack motion measures very, very accurately. See, I'm barely moving it, and you can see any minute little movement. It measures very, very accurately what your swing is doing and what your wrists are doing during the swing. What is the point of that? The point of that is that the wrists are kind of a vapor trail, or they're kind of a test that shows how good your golf swing is. Meaning that if you do certain things right or wrong, it will all show up in the wrist. So if you do this and this, you're going to see that in your wrist trail. And the thing that Hack Motion has is they have these tiles. So let's just go to the tile thing first. So they have these tiles. That was my practice swing. They have these tiles for address, top, and impact that have these green zones that they, you want to hit. Now you can sh uh, shift or slide those green zones. They, uh, they do adjust based off of your grip at address. But the green zones actually, I mean, for like 90% of people are really, really good to, if you get your swing somewhere in those green zones, then um, that's a really good place to start. So that was like a perfect 130 yard pitching wedge. So there, that's showing that I was, oh, that's showing me how to do audio feedback, which I'll show you later. So, so this, is, this is said I was a little too extended at the bottom. And that showed, that shot was, I was perfect at the top as far as flat enough at the top. But then at the bottom, it was a little too extended, which shows why that ball went dead straight, but it went a little high. So the key thing when you're using this, though, is that it's a wrist sensor. But even though it's a wrist sensor, the way to fix your wrist is almost always in how you're using your body or arms, not really how you are educating and moving and flexing your wrists. That, the wrist stuff happens, if you're, if you're doing it correctly, I think, the wrist stuff happens because of how you're using your body and your arms together. So now, if I'm, if I'm training that wrist position and I want to be a little less extended, through the ball and compress it and hit it a little lower, um, have a lag impact, that stuff, then I go there. Ball flight was lower. And now my wrist was in range. I was a little flexed in impact. The thing about hack motion is I think it is the best consumer golf tech thing that people can get. And now I especially want to do this review because they came out with a new version of it that is like much, much lower. I don't know if it's half of what the, the other one used to be. It's something like almost half price of what the, the uh, original hack motion was. It gives a few less, less graphs and things like that, but what we're doing now, you can do in the new one. So let's go into the, the wrist things of this. So see this pattern here? You'll start, as you use it, you'll start to learn what this means. But, uh, and Scott Cowix does d things of, okay, there's, uh, there are different patterns that work. In general, super, super general, for most people, what you want to see though, is you can have this, see how I have that slight W pattern, that's me, that's what I do. You just don't want those um, lines to be too steep, like the curves of them to be too steep. So you kind of want to swing and have that be like no surprises. So if I try to get my line very flat, and when I do this punchy ones, I always get a little too flexed at the top, but still, let's see the, the graph. See that line, once I get into that flex position from here, minus 20 to there, minus 12 to there, minus 26, that's all like within a pretty tight range. So that's the main thing you're looking for. All right, that was just a great shot. It did go a little high, so let's see. No, yeah, see, it went a little high and that shows there. It was a little too extended. Still pretty good for a strong grip player or a slightly stronger grip player. So 
the hack motion, what, like, what does it do? What does it fix? All different things, but I think one of the main things it fixes is uh, that I did a video about is this dip under here. And then it fixes impact. So, I mean, what, what else, what more would you, I mean, that's worth the price of admission and, and plus it does a lot more. So if I'm just trying to go extended at the top and really flat at the bottom, you can do some really extreme things. So I, I want to be more extended at the top this way, cupped. Most people shouldn't be, but because I'm like this, I want to be feel more extended at the top and flexed at the bottom. So you, you can do some fun experimentation, which is important in golf. Here we go. Extended at the top, flexed at the bottom and just try to match feel and real. And that actually was perfectly in range both ways. Me feeling that in the ball and see how crazy flat. This is the flattest I've ever made this line. Go here and you can check. Uh, it was 14 extended and it went to minus one. That's uh, literally the, the flattest I've ever kept that line. And the other thing it does too is that, uh, it's really great for putting because it has a putting mode as well that I won't put it in now. But basically a lot of people are running their, put running their putting stroke with, if you look at flexion extension, they're running their putting stroke with flexion first and then shoulder swing, then extension on the way through. So it would look like this, this. And uh, the hack motion, even more than video or anything, will really show that graph of what you're doing. You may be feeling that you're not running it with your wrist, but this will show you it, like how much of this you're doing through it. And I, I helped the player who just won the Long Beach Open, the amateur, uh, the amateur field at the Long Beach Open. And he would have finished sixth place in the, in the pro field because he was 14 under. And uh, I was helping him with his putting recently. All right, this was a, your normal pattern at first. See, so that green line dipping straight down was you um, flexing your, your lead wrist, your left wrist, quite a bit, even to outside the suggested range, and then basically flipping on the way through. So then, what was the feel here to make this line happen? See, the green line is much flatter, mm -hmm. staying in the suggested range. So what was the feeling? Just keeping my knuckles forward almost, so coming back to be forward. Okay, so show me a practice swing where you don't flatten it. It's gonna feel like knuckles up and then just, the, then just leave it. And then just leave it. Yeah, you don't have to add any. Yeah, that's good. So that six grip pressure, you're leaving it there. Slightly knuckles up and just leave it. Yeah, good putt. And uh, he was running his stroke like this and this, which can run like really hot and really cold when you get wristy uh, like that and run it with your wrist. So, and then the other thing that this does too is it does audio feedback, which is pretty powerful and awesome. So if I go here, audio feedback for the top. Okay, so listen to this. So that's the, these angels. So if I'm, if I wanna hear those at the top, right there and just feel that position, okay. That's the top, and I want to feel that position. <laughs> Hit a great shot, really solid. And see at the top, I kind of mapped that position. And you can do the same thing for, we could, we could switch and do this. You've seen guys do like impact fix, just to feel like, okay, what does a good impact feel like? If I go here and I go, that's a good impact. All right, I want that. That's what I want. That's not where I'm going to start, but that's where I want to finish. Awesome shot. And you see it, an impact so close, two degrees too extended, which comes almost within the margin of error. But let's get, let's get on the other side of that. So I'm here and I'm going to listen for the angels. That's where I want to be. Okay, that's impact fix. Now I put it back regular and then get there. Just an awesome straight shot. Two, uh, plus two, two extended again. So this is really great training, because these are awesome shots, but I gotta hit that even lower. That should be it. Yeah, so, so that was in range there. The cool thing as well about the Angels thing is if I put it on impact and I listen to my backswing, and I have this up loud enough. Let's go really loud. 
If I go to my impact, so it's on the impact thing, but if I go here, here I can hear it there. I should never be so flexed that I hear that. See in my backswing, if I'm there, I heard that little chatter. That's me flexing it too much. So it's a perfect little range to work on my backswing. See, I heard that little bit of a chatter in the backswing. Great shot, but that'll show me. See that little chatter that I heard showed me that I got to this level that they want me at. I got there too early. So I want to stay out of that pool, so to speak, and then get into it late. See, I can hear it just in that late part of my swing. Great impact, great shot. And that, for me, that negative feedback is even better than trying to keep it in range with a positive feedback. Great shot again. But I heard that little chatter on the way back. So that's something that, that I would work on. The more you use it and the more you learn about it, the more you'll be able to get out of it because it is a really, it's not like a one trick pony kind of thing. It's a device that really works well for a lot of things. And uh, you know, for little distance wedges and little short game shots and everything, there's this pattern and uh, movement smoothness that you're looking for there. You're not looking for this tuck and throw that you'll see in there. You're looking for this generally kind of quiet um, wrist until the end. And then if you want a lot of speed, then you can have that, that steep ramping can happen later to kind of release the wrist with your body. So super straight, we heard the chatter on the way back, which shows me there will be a dip. But um, see that ramping then goes right up at the end and that represents like a lot of, a lot of movement in a tight little space and it means a lot of speed. So I love the hack motion. So 10 out of 10, if I was giving it a, a review. It's the thing that um, if it broke, I would buy it on my own. Uh, I, would, I would love to uh, incorporate this more with the golf schools. This is certainly like a more like one-on-one -on -one thing. Because like anything, like, you have to learn what you're looking for. And more than anything, you should just, if you do get it, just go to the tiles and see where you, if you're, you can hit these three spots. I want to be able to maybe even make, have them make a fourth tile, and I've talked to the guys in Latvia about this that make the heck motion, a fourth tile that would show uh, kind of halfway back how much you're, you're dipping it. So, um, so that would be like a dress, halfway back, top, impact. Because I see a lot of people, myself included, are getting this really flat right there. So the hack, uh, so the hack motion, like I said, it used to be like, I don't know, 700 or uh, I think there was a pro version that was 800 or 900. It's much less now if you get this like consumer model that they came out with. It's the same exact uh, sensor, but kind of like the Tesla or other things, like it just has less things unlocked, but you can do the tile mode and putting mode and a lot with it. And then the higher level, uh, like the pro version of it, then lets you get very deep into the graphs. In this video, I talked really exclusively just about the um, owner and, uh, sorry, the flex and extend, but it also has the numbers for up and down this way, and then the numbers for rotating that way. So uh, you can get really deep into that and then get into like rate of closure and see if you're a player like that that's flinging it over. You can start working on some of those things through your swing. If you start working on your flexion and extension pattern with a hack motion, like I've only seen people get better with it. And now it's much cheaper, like I said, uh, to be able to do that. I've never had somebody that got it that was disappointed with it. If you wanna see really in-depth details to this review and then also the other hack motion things I did and stuff that I've done with other teachers, go to, uh, click the join button below. We're putting up a lot of extra content, raw content with uh, a lot of the different instructors and things that I do and uh, interviews. It's all going on the little join button in the Be Better Golf members page. You get a little badge so when you comment, I can automatically reply to anything. And uh, thanks for watching everybody and also subscribe. See ya, bye.